What's going on, everybody? I'm Max Ralph. Seth Engel. We've got spring ball. Uh, Penn State football got going today. First practice session of the spring of the 15 um, that will culminate in the blue-white game next month. Uh, we talked to James Franklin today for the first time and for the last time, Sandy Barber, who is on her way out as Penn State's athletic director. And um, she did confirm this will be her last AD job. And uh, among the future, she doesn't know. She wants to move back with family and maybe become a teacher somewhere. But um, Seth, let's, let's quickly hit on Sandy's press conference. Obviously, it's her last. You know, she's, she's on the way out. Penn State's already looking for a new athletic director. But there's also some other stuff that's going on in this transitionary period. Yeah, so you know, Penn State has already begun their search. Um, according to Sandy, she said she'll help out. However, um, they need her to, but it's really up to the new president, Neely Bendapudi, right now. Um, this is her search. Um, in some football news, um, Barbara did talk about uh, Beaver Stadium renovations, um, potentially in the, in the near future. Um, there was, uh, you know, a survey sent out to Penn State alumni yeah, and students, students season and, ticket holders, right. all, all that. So that was talking about basically, you know, what can be improved within Beaver Stadium um, and then also some things that relate to financial aspects. Um, but Barber did, you know, talk about and kind of hinted at the fact that Beaver Stadium is likely to be renovated in the future. Um, she said, you know, they probably all anticipate it being renovated um, and that she looks forward to coming back in some period of time to a renovated Beaver Stadium. Um, so that's pretty big news there. Um, you know, what, what else did you take away from that? Yeah, so Barber helped institute this like 20 year master plan with right. all of Penn State's facilities. Um, Panzer Stadium's one of the ones that already came to yep. fruition through it. Uh, and it looks like Beaver Stadium's kind of next on the list. I think maybe seating changes are up there. Um, one thing that's going to be huge is probably alcohol sales, right. I think, is going to happen. Um, so there's a lot to be on the lookout. Um, the other big stuff from today all came from James Franklin's presser. Um, kind of the biggest thing was he flat out gave us his O-line death chart for the spring, which was kind of shocking. But um, So he, he gave us uh, the left to right uh, on the starter is Olu Fashanu, mm -hmm. uh, Landon Tangwall, Juice Scruggs, uh, Sal, Wormley. Sal Wormley, who was hurt last season, and then Caden Wallace, who we thought might transition over to guard, but is staying in that starting spot. So yeah. do you, he also mentioned how they don't have a lot of depth this spring, which, which is not a huge issue because they've got a transfer coming in, Hunter Norzad. Um, how do you think that's going to play out this spring? Yeah, so I think one of the reasons why Franklin even gave us this depth chart right now is because I think it could look completely different by the time we actually get to the fall. Um, Caden Wallace, as we've mentioned, you know, I really do think he's still better at the guard mm -hmm. position. We'll see once Norzad comes in, uh, you know, where they place him because he played tackle at Cornell, but he also really can play the guard position. Um, so they'll kind of have to, like, mess around with him and, you know, see just where he fits. I really don't see Sal Wormley starting in the fall after not playing a single game last year. Uh, that just, you know, that doesn't really make sense to me. But, I, I mean, there's still just a lot that needs to be tuned up um, before we get to August. Yeah, I think Norzad's the interesting piece because I think he'll probably contend at both the guard spots for playing time. Right. Now, that could kick Landon Tangwall over to right tackle. He's played, he's played there some. Um, looked good at guard all season, though, when he played. And Caden Wallace, could he bump down? Is he going to stay where he is? Wormley is the interesting piece as well because, yeah. like you said, he didn't play last year, but Franklin revealed late in the season that he was going to be a starter right. uh, when they went into the year before he got hurt. So there's a lot of moving pieces, and, and like, he's, like Franklin said, there's not a lot of depth this spring, so a lot of guys are getting a lot of reps. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of Wormley, who came back from injury, on the other side of the ball, Adisa Isaac and Hakeem Beeman are two players on the defensive line who that, that spot took a lot of hits through the draft and everything last year. And now those two appear to be ready to go. To an extent. Um, Beeman, I think, is far ahead um, of Isaac in terms of, like, health. Yeah, uh, it, it, we don't know. Well, yeah, we don't actually know what happened to Beeman last year, whether it was injury or something else. Yeah. Um, Adiza Isaac was actually hurt, as far as we know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and he's still working back to that 100% threshold. Um, I'm not going to say that, you know, I think that he's going to be ready for the season, because I can't say that, but 
Um, Franklin, you know, certainly said that he's getting there. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be huge for Penn State's D-line, especially with Mustafa coming back. Mm -hmm. um, that it looks like D-line could again be, you know, one of Penn State's strong suits this upcoming season. Yeah, I, Isaac's going to participate in a lot of things this spring, right. close to 100% not there. Beeman seems to be back in full swing again. We, we don't know what happened last fall. Um, and then Mustafa back. And the other really interesting thing is Zane Durant. Right. Franklin raved about Zane Durant today, said he's adjusted really well in a short time, said he's already put weight on, and just flat out said that he could do something really rare and compete for playing time as a true freshman. Yeah. And that's impressive. Um, but another position group that's going through as much or more change than the defensive line is linebackers, where you're losing two starters in a three-man group mm -hmm. with uh, Brandon Smith and Ellis Brooks both on the way out, two guys who... Played really good football last year. I mean, Smith was a little inconsistent here and there, but you can't replace that athleticism. And Ellis Brooks is just a freaking rock. So um, Franklin mentioned a couple of names that are going to be shifting around and filling holes. So how, do, how is that going to play out this spring? Um, so, I mean, obviously you have uh, Jonathan Sutherland moving to Sam linebacker now. Um, Franklin has been raving and saying that, you know, he's, he's best when he's closest to the ball. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they're going to put him there. Um, he played linebacker in the Outback Bowl, yeah. um, and he was all right there. Um, kind of just need to see him more uh, to really, mm -hmm. you know, start to you know know whether he's going to be that firm uh, starter for the whole season. But it's likely he will start there. Yeah. Um, Curtis Jacobs obviously going to move over. Um, at he'll be he'll be he'll playing be at, Sam Sutherland's going to be at the will and more oh, that the field backer okay. spot. Um, and Which, then other than him, Tyler Elsden's a name yeah. to look out for um, if you want to talk yeah, about him a little bit. In the bit. middle there. Yeah, so Sutherland is, is going to take over that field backer spot. And it actually works really well with Manny Diaz's defense. People were a little bit worried about how that was going to fit because Diaz has played, you know, that five defensive backs um, kind of thing with three linebackers. So right. Sutherland fits really well because he can play both that kind of combo safety linebacker. Exactly. Franklin referenced what they used to do with Marcus Allen in the past, and so Sutherland's going to fit into that spot. Um, Jacobs is taking over the Sam spot as the leader, and then that middle spot is going to be between this spring, Tyler Elsner and Kobe King, right. um, two younger guys who haven't seen the field a lot, uh, but Franklin and the staff seem really excited about those two. And the other interesting one, another true freshman, Franklin raved again about Abdul Carter, just like he did with Zane Durant. He said Carter's tape from his senior football season was – as good as anybody's they'd seen on the stat, uh, on the recruiting list. And that's high praise. I mean, yeah. you've got guys like Drew Aller and Nick Singleton on that tape list. And Franklin said that Abdul Carter's might be as good as anybody. So linebackers, D-line, really interesting to watch as we go through spring and going to be interesting to kind of keep looking at it as we get closer to the blue-white game. Definitely. Yeah, well, that's all from us. Uh, observations from practice and media today as we kick off spring ball. Uh, track with us throughout on Twitter at PSU Footblog and online at collegian.psu.edu. See ya.